Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Sip Chats. I'm Brian Hyrick, your host. I've been with VoIP Supply about 14 years now as a VoIP specialist. And today, alongside us, we do have Paul Tuttle from CyberData. How's it going, Paul? Very good, Brian. Very awesome. good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having Absolutely. me. Thanks for taking uh, the time out and to have a little chat with us. Uh, Paul, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit um, about what you do with CyberData? And let's, let's hear about CyberData as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, of course, I'm Paul Tuttle, and I'm the Interoperability Manager for CyberData. Um, CyberData Corporation is an IP endpoint manufacturer. We started in the 70s, of course, not in VoIP way back then. We were doing POS stuff, but we kind of evolved as the market did. And we got into VoIP, and we're kind of seen as the IP endpoint solution company, whereas we provide anything from, say, door phones and secure access control devices to paging speakers for overhead announcements to interfaces to analog paging systems to facilitate the use of old school analog systems that you know somebody spent a whole bunch of money on and still wants right. to utilize all that all that infrastructure. So we really dabble dabble in a lot at CyberData. And in my position, what I do is an interoperability manager. It's kind of a buzzword term. But basically what I do is I test our products on different platforms and make sure that everything works correctly. If it doesn't, I either work with the provider of that particular platform to fix any problems that they have on their end. That's pretty rare. Usually I end up helping our team fix any, say, networking problems or any SIP-related communication problems to get everything working smoothly and expected when, problem, when products go into that particular platform. And then after we get all the testing done, you know, we'll do our formal release and everything and put out all the marketing stuff. But then comes <laughs> documentation and actually setting up the products because it's all well and good to say, oh, our products are tested and they work on this platform, but I don't have any documentation to show you how to do that. So the whole second step of it is setting up all that documentation and, and writing all of those um, basically documents to walk through the setup process and in a really easy, straightforward way. You know, we all had trouble setting up the, the time on our VCR back in the day. So <laughs> I want to try to avoid that with our documentation and make, you know, setting up SIP endpoints as easy as possible. Absolutely. Yeah, that's super important. And, you know, obviously we've been through a lot through this past year and um, workplaces have changed drastically and a lot of the equipment um, needed to operate today um, under today's, I guess, uh, confines, uh, if you will, um, requires different equipment. You know, we're using Zoom now. Um, uh, MS Teams is huge and, and VoIP. VoIP in general is really a term that everyone's now familiar with. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit of how you're seeing uh, cyber data's products um, being integrated with the uh, current uh, workplace environments? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we've always done a lot in the hosted environment, especially before, you know, the current situation. You know, the hosted providers were always, you know, a big mover for us, but really after the current pandemic and everything that we're dealing with, um, things have just really changed. And we've seen, you know, like you said, a really big boost in Zoom and MS Teams. Zoom okay. was one that we had always kept our eye on because behind the scenes, they were the ones that were providing, say, the actual web conference capability for a lot of other providers. That was basically all Zoom was doing for a long time, just the, the video conferencing. You know, they did it for Ring Central was one of their big ones that they pushed. You know, it was um, meetings with Ring Central powered by Zoom. And they kind of came out with a phone system and we started working with them. You know, we had our eye on them for a while and they mm -hmm. reached out to us. It was kind of a mutual thing where we knew that they were going to launch a phone system offering. They knew that they were going to launch that and they wanted a paging partner and they knew us out there in the industry. So it was kind of a mutual reach out together. And we started working together and we've seen a really big increase in inquiries for Zoom customers. Zoom has been really, really popular. I think that, you know, they've kind of got that Google effect now where, you know, especially right. when people in their personal lives, you know, and they're, they're having, you know, a meeting with grandma, they're having a Zoom meeting. Everybody's doing the Zoom stuff and you have a Zoom meeting instead of just like a web conference or, you know, a Skype call or something, you have a Zoom meeting and they've kind of got that Google effect 
where people just synonymize a web meeting as Zoom. And I really think that Zoom is going to be a really big player going forward. And the same thing with MS Teams. You know, I, th I see Zoom is a little bit more of the small to medium business. They hit some enterprise level customers because I still deal with a lot of universities that are doing that now because they bundle so much together. But I see Teams as kind of the um, enterprise counterpart to the small to medium business for Zoom. And Teams has been really, really useful. We use it at Cyberdata. And one of the pain points that you can get into with Teams is because it's in a Microsoft system, you need some kind of an intermediary device or service to be able to communicate with Teams because it can be very tough to get in and play in that, in that Microsoft environment. Um, so that's why we've uh, started working with a couple different companies. Vodia is a big one that we've been working with for a hosted solution in terms of integrating and providing direct routing with Teams. And Ribbon is another really great example. Awesome. Awesome. Now, are, are you guys seeing more, um, I guess, with the current environment, are you seeing more uh, actual paging speakers or is it more door access uh, solutions or intercoms or, or really a mix of um, everything? Yeah, fantastic. It, it's, it's really a mix of everything. You know, when the whole situation occurred and, you know, people aren't going into the office, kids aren't going to school. I imagine right. we were going to see a pretty big drop off in paging speakers and paging equipment because, Nobody's going to be around to hear those pages. Why would you need to go out, go and shell out all this money to buy, uh, you know, paging speakers if nobody's going to use it? But we've still seen, you know, a, a pretty dramatic increase in those. But I really think intercoms has been one of the big things that we've seen a lot of traffic in just because people are trying to isolate a little bit more. And those that still do go into the office, they keep the system locked up. There's not that many people on the location. And, you know, if, say, a UPS guy comes over and knocks on the door, they might not right. want to, like, physically interact with the UPS guy because who knows how many people he's talked to. You know, they could potentially be contaminated with, with you know, uh, COVID. So um, you try that typically people are, are moving more towards um, intercoms for communication with, you know, exterior people. And the nice thing with our intercoms is they've got an, an onboard relay to actually trigger the door. So you can unlock the door remotely with just a simple DTMF code. You know, the UPS guy can just walk up and press a button and say, hey, I'm UPS. You know, I got your package delivery. OK, leave it there. Or, you know, they can buzz them in and have them leave it in the, the, the threshold of the doorway. So we've definitely seen a really big um, increase in intercom sales. That was one thing that, you know, I, we really saw, especially when pairing with our flush mount kits, especially in the medical industry. That's another place that we've seen a big tick up there because in patient intake rooms, they're trying to keep the nurses and the doctors, you know, segmented and keep them away from the potential patients. So we've seen a really big increase in intercom sales for that industry and pairing them with our flush mount kit because that pairs um, with our outdoor intercom, it's stainless steel, and then with our flush mount kit, also stainless steel. So it's really easy to clean and sanitize after every potential interaction. So we've seen a pretty big uptick in intercom sales, but surprisingly, paging systems are still fairly active. I think it's because the schools aren't in session right now, and they, you know, they haven't been in session for a while. So it's been a great time for installers in schools that have been saying, yeah, we need to upgrade the phone system, but it's not right. You know, we need to upgrade the paging system, but the time's not right. Well, there's no better time when all the kids are stuck at home, you know, doing remote right. classes to go through and work on the paging system. Absolutely. May as well get it done now. And, um, you know, I, I can absolutely vouch as well that we are seeing an uptick in paging speakers, and especially with TalkBack. Like, you know, for the scenario here at VoIP Supply, um, you could be working from home and on your cell phone, instead of calling someone in the warehouse, you can still page the warehouse from mm -hmm. your cell phone you know, regardless where you are and have a talk back uh, relationship with your warehouse, just as if you were in the office. So I, I really think it enables the same efficiency of really being on site. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the things that I really like about our products and that capability that it provides. And when you pair that with a hosted system, like you said, whether it's Teams, Zoom or what have you, you know, it provides that capability to be able to interact with the people on site at location wherever you are in the world, basically, as long as you've got an internet connection or a mobile data connection, you can still communicate with them here fine. and do live paging for them. No problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Paul, thank you so much for taking um, your time and sitting down and having a sip chat with us. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add about uh, cyber data or maybe tell us something about uh, what you have going on or, or uh, what's upcoming? 
Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the big things that we've had been go we've had going on, and one of the big things that I've been working on personally is I do internal training at CyberData for our sales team and basically anybody that wants to sit in on it. Where once a week we have this thing we call Cyber School, and everybody gets together in the afternoon and listen to me talk for a particular product uh, about a particular product for about an hour or so. And we started cutting up those videos and putting them on our YouTube channel at YouTube.CyberData.net. Um, so that way people can actually go and interact with our YouTube channel and uh, actually watch these different seminars. We've got them available. We've got a pretty big catalog. And that's one thing that I've been really working on. The last one that we did was just about video intercoms. But it ranges from something specific for, say, you know, our entire keypad intercom range, talking about all the specifics and how they work to overhead speakers, the application to use for them, and then other kind of like features, say, like auto provisioning. We did a whole session where I talked about auto provisioning provisioning for an hour. I swear people are getting tired about listening to me talk, but they keep asking for me to keep, they keep asking me to keep doing these sessions once a week. So we keep doing it. We're putting it on YouTube for the masses. So that's super cool and super useful too, especially for our customer base. So be sure to check out uh, Paul Cyber School. And uh, we really appreciate everyone tuning in uh, today. And Paul, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to uh, sit with us. Absolutely. Thank you for the time, Brian. I look forward to chatting with you again. Sounds great. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time on Sip Chats.